Hi all, in the last video we learned about the somatic cell cycle. Maintaining proper rates of progression through the cell cycle is an important part of homeostasis in multicellular organisms. For example, skin cells replicate at the base of the epithelial layer every few days. Since the skin is stratified squamous epithelium, like we saw in lab, they go through a somewhat prolonged maturation process, or G1 phase, before becoming squamous cells on the outer surface of the skin. But if you cut yourself, the cells immediately adjacent to that damaged tissue will go into action and ramp up their cell cycle rate to repair that damage with scar tissue. So, so the skin epithelial cells have to have fine-tuned and modifiable control over the rates of their cell cycle. Intestinal epithelium is just one cell layer, simple columnar epithelium. As digested food passes through the intestine, that causes damage to the epithelial layer. Thus, intestinal epithelial cells have to go through the cell cycle every couple of days to maintain themselves. On the other extreme are adult brain cells and muscle cells. These cells go through the somatic cell cycle at such exceedingly slow rates that they might never replicate themselves in the person's lifetime. We say that these types of cells are in GO phase, which is sort of a never-ending G1 phase. All of this is to say that control of cell cycle rate is very important in maintaining healthy tissues. Too slow and damage can't be re repaired efficiently too fast and we may get an accumulation of cells that becomes cancerous. What do we know about regulation of the somatic cell cycle? There are several times in the somatic cell cycle when the cell seems to monitor how things are going. If systems check out, then the cell progresses on to the next phase. If something is wrong, the cell might stall itself until things are righted or the cell might commit suicide called apoptosis. We call these moments of systems monitoring cell cycle checkpoints. We know of at least three major cell cycle checkpoints. The G1 or G1S checkpoint occurs prior to a cell transitioning from G1 phase to S phase. Here the cell checks to see if it's appropriate in size and has enough cytoplasmic resources to make it through the rest of the cell cycle when those resources will be devoted to replication and not much new resource acquisition and production will occur. The cell also checks for major genetic damage. The G2 or G2M checkpoint occurs prior to a cell entering mitosis. Here the cell again checks for adequacy of resources and, importantly, checks for the correct number of chromosomes. Remember this is in G2 phase after chromosomes have been replicated in S phase. So it makes sense that a count of the chromosome number would happen at this point. The M checkpoint occurs during mitosis. Correct assembly of the spindle apparatus is checked here. If the spindle apparatus isn't built properly and if chromosomes aren't properly connected to the spindle, then chromosomes may migrate to wrong poles and will end up with daughter cells that have incorrect numbers of chromosomes. At each checkpoint, there are multiple proteins involved. Some proteins are signals that move the cell ahead in the cell cycle progression. We call the genes that encode and are recipes for these proteins proto-oncogenes. They are like the accelerator pedals of the cell cycle. Other proteins do the systems checking and slow down the cell if something is wrong. Genes that encode these slowdown proteins are called tumor suppressor genes. They're like the brake pedals. Each checkpoint seems to be influenced by multiple gas pedals, proto-oncogenes, and multiple brakes, tumor suppressor genes. Each type of cell is affected by its own combination of proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. Having the correct balance of gas pedals and brakes allows the cell to progress through its cell cycle at the correct pace. If a cell loses regulation of a proto-oncogene or if the proto-oncogene has a gain-of-function mutation so that too much of that gas pedal protein is made, that may throw off the balance so that the cell reproduces too much. 
or if a tumor suppressor gene undergoes a loss of function mutation so that the protein it produces doesn't act as efficiently as a brake pedal, again, the cell may end up reproducing too often. Both those situations may result in cancer, uncontrolled growth of cells. This slide shows an example of a tumor suppressor gene that is an important brake pedal in many cells. When P53 is working right, genome damage is recognized and the cell cycle is either temporarily halted until the damage can be repaired or the cell undergoes apoptosis if the damage is beyond repair. In cells that have a mutated P53 that produces non-functional protein, the brake pedal doesn't work and the cell progresses unimpeded by P53 protein. That is one step towards cancer. In the next video, we'll talk about the multi-step process that is typical of cancer development.